Hallelujah. Just tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor, I want more from God. I want more from God. And neighbor, look at you funny. Just look at them funny and say, I want more. I want more. but they say that one out of three people got beautiful spirits. So if you got three people in your hand, one of y'all has got a beautiful spirit. <laughs> so you need to tell them, say, it's me. <laughs> it's me. It's me. get up in the morning. I'm early in the morning a reader. And uh, I read this this morning. I'm going to share with you because it, it's right on point. And then I'm going to preach. I, uh, everybody get a handout today. If you didn't get a handout, uh, make sure we get them out. Uh, I don't necessarily need one. So you get, there's, there's some, raise your hand so you didn't get one. And I, you know, praise the Lord. printed on a news website. I'm not going to give the newspaper credit or, or the news organization's credit, but I want you to know that this actually was on their website. Still is, actually. And the title was Opinion. I asked God to end, my suffer ask, end the suffering in my life, and what happened next stunned me. Look to your neighbor and say, God did not come here to end your suffering. He came to end his suffering through you. I want you to get it. When he got on the cross, his suffering ended. And since he jumped in you, his suffering And there's a neighbor. I asked God to end my su to end the suffering in my life. What happened next stunned me. Some of y'all gonna hear this and you're gonna say, oh, this fits right in. God ended his suffering in you so you can be dead set free. I know someone who's trapped in a dead-end job right now. He's been there for years, and this is the article. This is what I'm reading. And he's trying to make the best of it. But realistically, he his, his resume is probably far too stale for him to get a different job for which he's qualified. I know a woman who has an ongoing chronic condition that doctors can't fix. You never know it, 
if you met her, the embarrassing symptoms and limitations. She's long for some medical breakthrough that will fix the problem, but there's little hope. For that and, what, and for whatever reason, God hasn't healed her. I know a number of single people who long to be married. They've checked all the right boxes. They're financially stable, physically fit, and godly. But nobody seems to notice them. Somebody left an anonymous gift for me, and I hope I never find out who did it. I was working out the other day, and I got frustrated as I came to God with one of my requests for him to end the suffering in my life. Finally, I tried to make myself feel better by saying, I guess this is my story. Some of y'all have said that. I guess I'm just called to suffer. This is, this is what I've been called to do. What I, what I meant was, this is my cross to bear, and I, lead, and I live my story without complaining, but I started sensing that this is my story wasn't quite right. Then this thought hit me. This isn't your story of suffering. This is Christ's story of suffering. Jesus didn't stop suffering on the cross. He continued to suffer with his children because he literally lives inside our bodies. He goes through the very circumstances we experience every day. This is his story of suffering that came after he was resurrected. Since we are his children, we are his heirs. This is Romans 8, 17. But we don't just inherit the heaven or happy ending. Uh, what you have to understand is we also inherit the suffering of the cross. If we are to share in his glory, look to the neighbor, I'm going to share in his glory. We must also share in his, oops. Suffering is not an exceptional state that God will always fix on the side of heaven. It's part of the package, part of the plot, but we don't walk through the pages of our story alone. This is where it gets to the point where, yes, you may feel like you're suffering. You may feel like you're going through. You may feel like you have all this pain. You may feel like you have all this heartache. You may feel like every relationship you enter in, it ends in a dead end. It may look like every job you go to may end up not your job. But what happens, you get to find out is the part that you think you're going through, your Heavenly Father is right there with you. The, the deals that you're dealing with, the Holy Spirit is right there with you. And, and every time you come up to a point where you think you're suffering too much, God then kills that out because he died on the cross and then relieves you of that suffering so that you can feel his glory. Let me get rid of it. I'm going to get ready to get there. I'm going to get ready to get there because this is what drew me to this message. It says, we don't walk through the pages of our story alone. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Y'all remember last Sunday, right? Check this out. Writes himself onto the pages, into the very character he created. Hebrews 12 and 2 tells us that every time we think about it, his story has wrote, wrote itself in the Word of God, and the tables of the Word of God are written on our hearts. The reason why he wrote the Bible is that he can, you can see himself in you as you read. So when you're looking in the Bible, you're not just looking in the Bible to read the story. You are looking at yourself being ready for you, baby. You begin to understand where God is taking you. The fire of God is operating in you. As you open up the Bible, you are looking at a mirror, looking at yourself, because God has said you look like him. Uh, the Bible goes on in the uh, in Corinthians and tells you uh, that, uh, that, that you behold the image. You begin to look from glory to glory, and, and you begin to look like God. What are you doing? You're reading the Word. As you read the Word, you begin to look in the mirror, and you see God in everything you do. I wish I had some help up in here. But that was, this article was written by a lawyer 
in the D.C. area. A man of God who wrote that in D.C. surrounded by all that suffering. I come to tell you that today is about the word. And the word is on fire. Look to him and said, the word is on fire. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that you touch us in a mighty way. Strengthen us, build us up as we receive you. Because we are receiving your word. We thank you that we don't add anything to it because we don't need to make you more pretty. We need to make you more handsome. Your word stands on its own. We don't add anything to it because your word is powerful all to itself. But God, we ask that your word be active in us so that we can walk, talk, and act in the Holy Ghost power that is given to us through your word. So, Heavenly Father, we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. While you're turning to uh, Mark 4, we, I, I'm not going to be before you long, but while you're turning to Mark 4, I just want to recap last week. Last week we had the, uh, the word was there from the start. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Uh, the word reveals uh, the truth and freedom, uh, John 8. Uh, the word uh, brings a prosperity. If you continue in my word, uh, you shall uh, receive prosperity, Joshua 1, and also uh, Psalms 1. The word guards against sin and keeps you clean. I, I want you to see that because there's a uh, there's power in uh, the word. Uh, hopefully everybody got this take a take away because you're going to put you're going to put in a little bit more work today. You're going to work the words. So I'm going to work the word. Uh, 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 there's a songwriter. A songwriter says something about that. It's a uh, uh, work in the word. I want the word to work for you. Sometimes you have to understand, and I, I want y'all to hear me, and I want you to see me, is that there is a point in time uh, where we have gotten numb to the world so much that the uh, that we don't even recognize uh, when God is trying to talk to us because we've allowed the world to take over us. Y'all quiet because I, 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 I'm hitting on something that is causing y'all to have challenges in your mind. That's okay. I did not come to, to make you uh, shout and dance. I came to get you right. And in getting you right, that means I've got to give you the word. I have to get you to understand where the word is taking you. If that means th uh, not taking that smile off your face and you getting a frown because y'all are trying to study what I'm giving you, I'm okay with that. If you get mad at me and throw tomatoes, I'm okay with that. As long as you can uh, uh, receive what I'm teaching you today because it will break through the crud uh, that has crusted on you from all your exposure to the world. You ever look at something that uh, they that they somebody threw out? It was a it was an antique, but they threw it out because they've allowed it to be crusted over, and then they they take it to somebody, and somebody then t polishes it off, cleans it off, and they find out that this thing is worth a whole lot of money. But the person who threw it out, it wasn't worth them anymore because they just let it uh, build up on them. That's how we are when we walk through the world, and we don't put enough cleaning uh, agent on us. The word of God. So let's go, go with me to the book of Mark. The book of Mark, we're going to read chapter 4. When you got it, say amen. Chapter 4 says, And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was uh, gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into the ship and sat at the sea, and the whole multitude was at the sea of the land. And he taught them many things by parable, and he said unto them his doctrine. 
he began to, to uh, lay out uh, his uh, his specific doctrine. Some of us have a problem with being indoctrinated. I want to be indo indoctrinated by Jesus. That means if if he has to stick a, a, a needle of the word in me so that I'm getting his specific doctrine, I'm getting his blood type, I'm not getting nobody else's blood type. I, I, I like a lot of preachers in the land, uh, but I, I want them to preach Jesus. I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to be indoctrinated with they stuff. I want to be indoctrinated with God stuff. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? If you go to the uh, if you go to the doctor and they try to give you a transfusion, if you got O positive like I got, I'm the universal donor, but not everybody can receive me. I'm a little different than everybody else. I'm okay with that. I look strange. I'm the blackest white man you'll know or the whitest black man you'll know, and I'm okay with that. I have a big nose because that's part of my who I am. I'm Jewish, and, and I'm good, but I'm one fly brother. <laughs> Some of y'all can't take the New York in me. Some of y'all can't take the Miami in me. Some of y'all can't take the combination that God created me in. But what I'm telling you is uh, when I go to get a blood transfusion, I want O positive blood, the one that is meant for me. Right? I want to come right from Jesus. I want the word of God that Jesus said. I don't want uh, what so-and-so said. Because if I could, if if I wanted what so and so said, I'd have just got it from so and so. Say the word on fire. Okay, he said, "Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow." People said a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowl of the air came and devoured up. Some fell on stony ground where it had. Uh, not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and, and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Another fell on good ground, and it did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100. And he said unto him, He that hear an ear, let him hear. Let, he said, he that hath the ear, let him hear. Uh, first of all, I want you to get this in the pic, uh, a word picture already. Already there was uh, four people that received the word, four areas that received the word. Three, uh, three of them were no good. So already when the word goes out, 75% of your people aren't hearing it. Or they're hearing it and it's not profitable for them. Think it not strange when they look at you crazy. When you, when you minister to them and they don't want to hear you, think it not strange. They're in the 75. But the reason why you keep preaching, the reason why you keep ministering, the reason why you keep sharing the Bible is because eventually you'll come across somebody that's in the 25% that's ready to receive. And even those that are in the 25 can only receive possibly 30, 60, but there's a few that's going to get 100% of it, baby. What I'm saying is don't think it's strange that you're putting out all this word and it's only received 100% by a small few. Can I tell you that this going this going this going to break your spirit right here. Only 8.333% is receiving 100% of the word that God has given. Some get 30, some get 60, other get 100. 8.33%. Okay, how did I get that figure? 25% divided by 3. Mm. 
So for every hundred people, eight and a half are receiving your word. Why do you think I'm ministering so much on this prayer.com? Because uh, it's time for us to hit it harder than we've ever hit it. Because we have to. For every 1,000, only 83 will receive it. For every 10,000, only 830 will receive it. That's, that's not enough. You be, you be, you've met 1,000 people in your life. That means 83 of them might. Because you, who says you hit the hunt, the right hunt, the right thousand? Think about that percentages. Because unfortunately, you might have hit the same, the same seventy five percent all the time out of that thousand, and so you might not hit any of them. I don't mean to get y'all mad at me. I just want y'all to read. <laughs> let's, let's keep reading. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Y'all getting anything out of that? Okay. So uh, and so we continue on, and we're going to read down to 20. He said, when he, he was alone, they were about him with the 12 uh, uh, and asked him of the parable. They, they were confused. They said, wait, God, how do you figure this out? And so and God said, and he said unto, unto, unto uh, it is unto given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parable. He tried to, he said, for y'all, I, I will teach you in parable because y'all not ready yet. And so you can understand it. I'm going to teach it in an understandable way in parable. That's why uh, if you want to talk to some athletes, you talk to them in coach speak. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? We talk, uh, we talk in tackle. We talk in X's and O's, and they'll figure it out. If you want to talk to somebody uh, who's in uh, accounting, you talk to them in financial speak. Right? That's how you break. Instead of doing some get 30, some get 60, some get 100%, you say, well, some get 30%, uh, and you carry the zero, and, and you bring it, and then some of you get 60%, and you know it, it's also a, a, a supply and demand because economics will tell you that uh, as God continues to send it out, the, it becomes more valuable because other people have taken the, the bad stuff, and you got the good stuff left over. You can, you can break it down for them. And then if you got computer guys, then you talk to them in ones and zeros because that's how they read. But that's what a parable is. It's just so that the reader, who in this case are mostly farmers or ag people that in agriculture can understand it. Y'all with me? Yeah. Uh, so you know, the, you know your audience, right? I worked for Disney for 16 years. I had to talk to them in, in areas of Mickey's. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I preached, I would preach the Magic Kingdom all the time. I knew how to, I, I could bring in the Word of God easy because this I say, well, you see how, uh, you see how it works? Uh, uh, good always defeats what? Darkness. Every, every uh, Disney tale has good defeating evil or the darkness matter of fact uh, i just got my last i just got my new game kingdom hearts kingdom hearts is uh the uh good characters using a key not using a blade using a key to defeat the darkness no blood uh, nothing and the darkness when the darkness loses it puts out money and prosperity yeah what I'm telling you is when you defeat the darkness, you get stronger. Too, too many of us want to hold on to the darkness and we can't defeat it. That's because we're not powerful enough yet or we haven't recognized how powerful we are. Say in Jesus' name, the word is powerful in me and I'm on fire. It says, he said, that seeing that may see not perceive, hearing my, may, my, may hear, or not understand, lest any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven. He said, if I teach them this way, they'll, they'll, they'll get it. And they'll get, I, I love this because he didn't say they got saved. He said they what? God can what? Converted. <laughs> 
God is out to get everybody saved, but those that understand the mystery get con- Some of y'all got to get the mystery, y'all. I appreciate that everybody in the room is saved, baby. I, I, I get that. Y'all are, done, done made the entrance into heaven, but now my goal through the word is to get you what? Converted. Mm. And then look at it says, shall be converted and their sins shall be forgiven. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. He said, and he said unto them, know ye not this parable, and how then you will know all the prob- parables. The sower sows the word. What did he say? The sower sows what? <laughs> I know I was getting you somewhere. And these are thy, uh, they by the wayside <laughs> when the word is sown. But when they have heard it, Satan comes immediately and taketh away the word uh, that was sown in their hearts. Look at that. Some of us allow Satan to come take away the word before it even gets planted. Look at the answer of the word. And these are the, they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and shall endure but a time afterward when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake. Immediately they are offended. <laughs> they let it go immediately when trouble comes up. They let the word get out. And it just get taken. But they didn't hear the songwriter say, trouble don't last always. And these are which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entered in, uh, choke the word. And it becomes unfruitful. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm not going to let none out, choke out my word. I'm not going to let anybody choke out my word. And these are which are sown on good ground. Such hear the word and receive it. Look to the next, I receive it. Point number one, the word is sown. Say, I receive it. Point number one, the word is sown. I receive it. I love these graphics. I like that. Keep that up. Just keep that up just because. Uh, look at that. The word is sown on fire. Say, the word is on fire. So I rebuke Satan taking my word. I rebuke troubles of this world taking my word. I rebuke I rebuke the cares of this world taking my word. And I receive the word as it's sown. Now I'm just going to run through a couple of quick uh, a couple of quick scriptures and and you'll you'll get the theme of this. First Samuel 15 and 10. You uh, and uh, I, I, uh, they're in the uh, the scripture references. So then came the word of the Lord saying unto Samuel. First Kings 11, uh, 6 and 11. And the word of the Lord came to Solomon. First Kings 17 and 2. The and the word of the Lord came unto him. First Kings 17 and 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying. First uh, Isaiah 38 and 4. Then came the word of the Lord saying. Jeremiah 1. Then the uh, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, what, what you hear is a, is a team that the word points the way. Look to them and say, the word prophesies. <laughs> uh, I believe that uh, if you look to the text, you can easily find a prophecy that was built for you. I, I begin to prophesy to myself even as I was doing my study because the word began to point the way to my breakthrough. The words begin to tell me that uh, he gave me the power to create wealth because it establishes a covenant with me just like he establishes a covenant with my forefathers. Uh, what I'm saying is the, the God of Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob is the same God that, able, uh, that broke me uh, free of any captivity. I believe that if he, pro- I prophesied 
God that uh, if there's a place I need to go, God will cut the Red Sea in half and I'll be able to walk on dry ground. What I'm saying is you can find your, your breakthrough in the word. I prophesied to myself and God pointed me the way uh, that uh, when we started this church, uh, our church needed to be towards the east. What I was saying was he was, I was saying what part of the east? East Kansas City? No, he said east of Jackson County and that's where we ended up. What I'm saying is if you allow God the word to begin to prophesy to you, it will speak clearly, baby. Why? Because it's not just a word. It is the God, and it is God speaking through his pages. <laughs> Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the word points the way. Everybody need to find them a scripture and say, God, you point the way in, in my heart. You tell me where to go. I love it how he, pro he talked to Jeremiah. Go with me to the book of Jeremiah 1 and 4. We're going to start right there. I wasn't going to preach all this, but I feel so heavy in my spirit right now. Somebody needed to hear this. Then the word of the Lord came, in, came unto me, saying, Be, Behold, before I informed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And I before thee camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I or, or ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. I come to talk to somebody today that the word is prophesying to anybody and everybody that if you want to feel God prophesying to you, why don't you start in Jeremiah? If you want to feel God prophesying to you, why don't you jump over to Isaiah? If you want to feel God prophesying to you. He'll even talk to your dead bones in Ezekiel. What I'm saying to you, some of y'all been dead for way too long. God will start breathing on you. And, and matter of fact, uh, if you think about it in Jeremiah chapter 20 and 9, it's like a word is fire like shut up in my bones and I start to feel a fire of God moving on me. What I'm coming to tell you is that there is a prescription for your healing. And if you find it in the word, I promise you you're healed. Uh, what I'm telling you, there is a prescription for your uh, poverty. If you find it in the word, you're healed with prosperity. <laughs> it, there is a way for God to point the way for you. But you've got to start prophesying God's word back to yourself. The word will point you the way, baby. Some of y'all need to catch that. I'm preaching better than y'all shouting, so that's okay. The word points the way. Look to him and say, the word points the way. <laughs> Isaiah 61. Uh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Look at this. Can I, can I, can I show you biblically how the word pointed the way to the word pointing the way? Isaiah 61. Y'all got it? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he, the Lord anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison to the bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to, conform, to, conf, to comfort all that mourn. Y'all see that? Now, the Bible tells us in the book of John, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then it tells us that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Luke 4 and 18 says, wait, let me read 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and his uh, customs was, he went into the synagogue. Where'd he go? Uh, he came where? Into the church. Look what he did. He went into the church and, and, and stood up to read. What did he read? We're going to find out. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. What, 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 what did he find? And what was written? And look what was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance to the captives, and recover the sight to the blind, set the liberty of them that bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it to the minister, and sat down in the eyes of them with synagogue and fasted on him. Why? He dropped the mic because he just preached himself to himself, and everybody who witnessed it could see that he knew exactly what he was talking about because he had wrote it way back in Isaiah. 
When he breathed into Isaiah, he had the full picture in place, baby. That's why when you see a word uh, that's in the Bible that points the way, it's because God, when he wrote it, he had the full picture in place that you was going to need it when you needed it. So that's why Jesus was able to walk this out and just say, you know what? Give me my word. That's what I said. And then what'd he do? Say, I'm done. Yeah. Hey, he, he dropped the mic because he already knew what it said before he said it. Because he wrote it way back in Isaiah. He breathed on Isaiah and said, Isaiah, I need you to write this because in Luke 4, 18, I'm going to need to open it up. And when I open it up, it's going to prove how, God, how powerful I am to those that are astonished because I wrote it way back in Isaiah. I appreciate you, Isaiah, uh, prophesying what I said. <laughs> Why? Because uh, you answered the calling. Some of y'all, God is right. You got books in you, baby. You got, you got something in you that needs to be written. And you stopped writing. I'm telling you, no. You need to be like Isaiah and say, here I am. God send me. What well, You need to be starting your writing again. You need to hold back and, and stop this uh, thing of just recording it in your voice and actually write it down on paper. Y'all know I'm talking to somebody. Some of y'all do this voice recording thing, but y'all know y'all should be writing. Say it points the way. The word is sown. It points the way. And this is it right here. It's a powerful weapon against the enemy. Hebrews 4 and 12. Let's go there real quick. I'm, I'm almost done. I got two more scriptures. Can y'all bear with me? Oh, man, I'm a, I'll be done at 12.50. And, and we had communion. So, 4 and 12. Hebrews. They, some of you prescribe Paul to have written it. Some people uh, subscribe Barnabas to have written it. Uh, I'm not exactly who the author is, but what you do know is that the author is of Hebrew that's... Uh, he is a Jewish writer, and he wrote to the Jewish people that had started believing on Jesus. A and he did that, but you could tell that because he wrote it, he included Melchizedek in some of his teachings. What I'm saying to you is you have to know the author uh, uh, of each one of the books, but you do know the actual author, who's Jesus. So Jesus expired, uh, inspired the book of Hebrews to uh, the uh, Jewish believers uh, that had been spread abroad because he needed to reconnect them to their Jewish roots. I come to tell you that uh, the reason why you're so drawn to Glory Bible Fellowship International Church is, is not because I'm a great preacher. I am. I, I, I know that piece. But it's because uh, my, God, my job is to uh, bring you to your Jewish roots. Y'all going to talk to me today. It's for you to understand that uh, 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 the Bible was written to a Jewish audience for a Jewish season for them to get a Jewish reason of why to serve a Jewish king. And what they ended up doing is trying to ignore the Jewish king. So he started to bring it out to their remembrance of why Jesus is who he is. I come to tell you that the, uh, they, they, they missed it in the big picture. But those that followed after Jesus, not only did they catch it in the small picture, they actually begin to see how powerful it was to receive the Messiah at the time they received it. That revelation is what started a work. The church exploded through that revelation. 
So if you go back and look at the book of Hebrews, there are things that are in there that are not found in any of the other epistles, not any other letters, because it, they, they, it, it, it goes to a different audience. Sometimes uh, uh, what, who powerful God was is he knew the audience that he was speaking in front of. Not everything you say affects everybody that hears it. Know your audience. Look to, look to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, know the audience. What am I saying? In the book of Romans and in the book of Corinthians, sexual immorality was rampant. Know your audience. In the book of Ephesians, they had went away from evangelism. Know your audience. In the book of Ephesians, it wasn't really a bad, they weren't a bad church uh, with apostasy. They had issues in knowing who, how powerful they are. So Jesus himself, through Paul, began to break down uh, religion to open up their spirit so they can receive the full power that they had. That's why he dealt with purpose in Ephesians 1 and 2. He dealt with uh, uh, the Holy Spirit in Ephesians 3 and how powerful he was. In Ephesians 4, he dealt with the mind and he dealt with the, uh, the body of Christ bringing bring together. In Ephesians 5, he dealt with the marriage. In Ephesians 6, he dealt with the children. And then after getting all that right, in Ephes late in Ephesians 6, he dealt with spiritual warfare. Because if your family and your children and your spouse and your mind and your purpose isn't right, you'll never be able to defeat no devils. That's why he dealt that in the order he did. But in the book of Hebrews, he talks to a Hebrew audience. He talks to a, a Jewish audience. And look what he says in 4 and 12. He said, for the word of God is quick, is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and all the way down to the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. My God. I love it in the Message Bible. Can we read that in the Message Bible? Look at the same neighbor. Tell that pastor to read it in the Message Bible. <laughs> thank you. I, I, I thank you for permission. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'll receive all of that. I appreciate the permission you've given me to proceed. Hebrews 4, 12 in the Message Bible says, God means what he says. What he says goes. Look to him and say, what he says goes. His powerful word is sharp as a surgeon's scalpel, cutting through everything whether doubt or defense, laying us open to listen and obey. Nothing and no one is impervious to God's word. We can't get away from it, no matter what. <laughs> no devil on the earth or out of this earth can get away from God's word. Matter of fact, God's word is so powerful against the enemy that when the enemy tempted it with him, with it, God turned it around and spit it back at him so bad that he ran away for a season. This is a powerful teaching because during when God was tempted in the wilderness, the only thing that turned away the temptation of the enemy was what? The word. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, the word is powerful. The, po the word will cut the enemy. Matter of fact, the, 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 uh, uh, the words start talking about, you know, you're so powerful. Why don't you uh, make yourself something to eat? What did God say? Uh, uh, the, uh, God should not eat uh, bread alone, but, but every word uh, that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Well, Y'all not talking to me. Uh, that's why I said, if you look closely, there's nuggets of, of nutrients right there in the Bible.
valuable that God had given it to us that if you just listen closely to God's word, you'll be full all the time. Uh, you'll never be go hungry. You'll never go uh, broke. You'll never go sick or diseased because you're eating the right nutrients. And what the right nutrients are is God's word. Uh, God begin to speak to you. Begin to minister to you. Begin to heal you. Why? Because you're chewing the right things. Uh, the, the problem is we allow so much worldly stuff to get in uh, that we choke out the word before it gets to us. Look to them and say, neighbor, the word, the word, the word destroys the enemy. Reason why sickness and disease try to jump on us because we don't have enough word in us. The reason why poverty jumps on us because we don't have enough word on us. The reason why things happen to us is because when things happen to us, we can't regurgitate God's word to get it done. You ever see what I'm saying? Like, if I get sick, I should be able to go, uh, with your stripes, Jesus, I'm healed. All right? Uh, 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 you can't get at me, uh, devil, why? Because uh, there's healing in his wings. Uh, 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 devil, you could try and hurt me, but there's no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that comes against me, the Bible says, I shall condemn. Uh, uh, what, what it's saying is uh, you uh, you might form your weapon, devil, uh, but it can't harm me. Because uh, if you look back closely, see, we don't even read this piece, uh, but God tells us that he created the weapon maker. <laughs> So I made the weapon maker this smart, uh, but I made the or this strong, but I made you stronger. How did how did God was so smart? He said, "No weapon formed against you shall prosper." Why? Because if you read up a little bit, it says, "I created the weapon maker." <laughs> if I created the weapon maker, I surely not go. Think about it, right? God made Smith and Wesson, right? But then he said, I promise you that Smith and Wesson, the, the bullets can't hit you because I made Smith and Wesson with the special guns. All the guns that I made with Smith and Wesson have to miss all my saints. No tissue covered over. The problem is when Smith and Wesson came to go and see us, we weren't saints like we should have been. That's on us. Right? Because what did you just say? The hedge of protection had a hole in it. There's a hole in there, Bucket. Elvira. Elvira. <laughs> There's a hole in that bucket. A bucket, a hole. Then the, the other part said, well, fix it. <laughs> right? And then the next, the next verse is fix that hole. I, <laughs> Yo, what shall I fix it with? Elvira? Elvira? Last scripture and we closing. Y'all with me? I'm keeping y'all uh, occupied. Go with me to the book of Jeremiah. It's two scriptures together. Jeremiah 20 and 9. I'm all in prophetess's book. And this is where I got the title of this message today. The word is on fire. Listen to the neighbor. The word is on fire. The word is on fire. Say it's on fire. If you just shake three people's hands and say it's on fire. The word's on fire. The word's on fire. Just get three. Just get three. Just get three. Uh, and, 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 and just knowing this, uh, one of y'all is the beautiful person. <laughs> but the word is on fire. The word is on fire. The word is on fire. I'm the beautiful person. I shake three hands. <laughs> the word is on fire. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm going to have y'all thinking about that for a long time. <laughs> Jeremiah 20 and 9, you got it? This is so good. You ever you read the Bible and it gives you some good cross reference scriptures and you just catching the, I'm just catching some good meat right now. I'm I'm in my own Bible study. Y'all just happen to be here. I, I promise you. Do y'all mind joining me for a second? Okay. Yeah. Ooh, yes, uh, that's it right there. Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, Jeremiah 20 and 9, and then we're going to read Psalms 39 and 3. Uh, uh, then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. But look what it said. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary for bearing, and I could not stay. I was so hot, I couldn't stay around it. The word of God is right now so hot in y'all, I couldn't stay around it. Look to them and say, the word is hot. The word is on fire. The word is on fire. Any, anybody get a word that you could feel the, the presence of God immediately when you got it and your face just start turning red and your ears start burning and your feet start burning and you just trying to figure out what it was that it was happening and it was the word of God that was just on fire in you and you just start sweating like you had eat hot chili uh, peppers and you just can't take it and you're trying to figure out what's going on. The word, that's the word just on fire in you and, and all of a sudden you feel the injection of the Holy Spirit start to operate in you and you want to lay hands on everybody. That is how I feel right now, uh, that I'm on fire so much. I'm sweating in my inside. Uh, I thank God that I'm changing my clothes after I leave here and, 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 and because I am so hot right now, and I just want to lay hands on everybody in here because I'm on fire. And what I'm saying to you is uh, I feel the uh, uh, like I'm walking on the hot stone coals of God, and right now in Jesus' name, there's a fire God is being transformed into you right now, and the fire God God is being transformed into you right now, and the fire of God is being transformed into you right now, and the fire of God is being transformed into you right now, and the fire of God is on you, sister, right now. You, you don't need no oil when you're cooking. That fire is already there in Jesus' name, and the fire, the fire, the fire, the fire of God is on me right now, and I just feel the sweat and it's the heat of God is on me right now. You feel, there it is, there it is, there it is, receive it. Receive, receive that fire, receive that fire. And if it, it's, it, it, what you're feeling is the spirit of God just being transferred, and you're getting a new spirit. And, and just like in the book of Job, he said he'll pour out his spirit on all flesh, and, and he'll talk to his maidens and his handmaidens and his old women and his old men. And God, everybody will start to prophesy. That prophecy is coming. That prophecy is coming. That prophecy is coming. That prophecy is coming. There it is. There it is. There it is. That prophecy is coming. That prophecy is coming and you woman of God you shall prophesy to your family and it shall manifest the prophecy is coming the prophecy is coming receive 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 there it is receive 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 you'll see new uh, new heights deeper depths you'll go deeper with God your relationship will get stronger get stronger get stronger get strong just come on down come on down come on down receive 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 don't receive 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 come on come on come on come on let's spread out let's go let's go come on I feel the fire I feel the fire it's on me the Bible says in Psalms 39 and 3 that it's hot in me 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 and you'll see it receive it receive it receive it it's hot in you it's hot in you it's hot in you it's hot in receive 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 that breakthrough anointing operation breakthrough is not just where you work at it's what you living through right now there it is receive it Come on, come on, come on, if you need it, come on, come on. 
There it is. There it is. Receive. Receive. Receive the upgrade. Uh, receive the upgrade in your tongues. Receive the upgrades in your walk. Receive the upgrade in your fire. There it is. 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 Receive. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Anybody. Come on. Fire. Fire. It's hot in me. It's hot in me. It's hot in me. I feel the anointing of God. I feel your breakthrough. I feel your educational breakthrough, young man. I feel your struggles. And God said that struggle that you've been sharing with him in secret, you're not going to struggle no more. You win. You win. You win. You win. You burnt off the enemy. That's how, fire, how much fire you got on you. It's on you. It's on you. It's on you. Fire. 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 You were teaching kids, and now you'll be a teacher for good. In Jesus' name, you walking in your teacher anointing. You walking in your teacher anointing. Not just with Link, uh, but I see that there's going to be an educational background going forward in you. Uh, it's in you. It's in you. It's in you. It's in you. Uh, come on, son. Come on. This is it. This is your breakthrough. This is your breakthrough. This is your breakthrough. Uh, the fire of God is going to be used for good and no longer uh, will you have to deal with the fire of the enemy. Uh, the enemy is off of you. 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 Uh, Come on, come on, there it is. You're gonna jump high. You're gonna go high. You go, I'm not talking just in the actual, I'm talking in the spirit. You're gonna jump high. You're gonna jump high. You're gonna jump high. You're gonna jump high. You're, gonna jump high. You're, gonna, you're going higher than anyone ever thought you would. They talk down to you and you talking, and now they're gonna be looking up at you in Jesus' name in the spirit. I see it, I see it, I see it. Come on, come on, come on, receive, receive, receive. This is it, woman of God. This is it. This is it. That no more struggles. No more struggles. No more struggles. God, uh, that struggle you went through just get you to your next level of glory. Your next level of glory. Uh, you're going higher in heights in the glory. Uh, that glory bubble just got expanded in Jesus' name. Receive, receive. We're breaking off struggles right now. We're breaking off struggles right now. I feel it. I feel it. There it is. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. There it is, man of God. There it is. There it is.
God is prophesying right now to you. The anointing you have for increase is not just increasing. It's tripling. It is tripling. Be one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost, three and one. He's going to take your one and turn them into three. He's going to take your one and turn them into three. He's going to take your one and turn it into three. That means new job, new great increase. You're going to have your own school. You're going to have your own school. I don't know if you're starting it or if you're taking on somebody else's job, but you get your own school because you're such a wonderful, peaceful spirit when it comes to how you work that everybody going to want to work for you. Everybody want to be attached to your educational department. They want to be a part of your district. I see superintendent in your future. It may be superintendent of the whole school district, or it could be your own school district that you make up. But, but God's getting ready to do something supernatural in you. And yeah, that's why I said one for the Father, one for the Son, three for the Holy Ghost, three and one. Because you'll be at the central office, and you might have three schools. <laughs> in Jesus' name, you in Jesus' name. God sees a great work in you, son. He sees a great work in you. This is it. Uh, you have a rock heart, you gotta have a soft heart. And, and that soft heart is a loving heart of God. And it's on fire for God again. It's on fire. Got somebody flame Joe fire. And now it's staying hot. It's staying hot. It's staying hot. There it is. Receive it. Just receive it. Just receive it. Don't worry about it. If you just receive, receive somebody's there. Just receive your weight. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Educate. Come on, son. Educate. You already dream dreams. You already see visions. God said those visions are going to be so hot and on point that everybody's going to run to you at one point. When you get older, you're going to be somebody that they'll say, this guy prophesies for real. This guy ministers for real. Uh, it's on me, and I receive uh, that transfer to you. Say, I receive it. Say, I receive it. So I, just yell it out. I receive it. You're you going to yell it out or I'm going to have to yell it for you? You're going to do it. You ready? Say, so I receive it. I receive it. Hey, Amen. Come on. Atashakaya and Atashaka. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. That's it. You feel it. You can feel it all the way in your bones. You can feel it all the way in your bones. Matter of fact, you feel it in the places you ain't never felt nothing before. In Jesus' name, there's a feeling coming back to your, your lower extremities that you never feel before. That's the fire of God working through you. You wonder why your legs start shaking. That's the fire of God starting to work in you. It's already manifested. Your healing. Your healing. God's good. Supernatural healing anointing is coming on you. And you're going to try and figure out what it is. And God said, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Just receive it, man, to God. Just receive it, man, to God. Receive, so I receive it. So I receive it. The fire of God. There it is, there it is. So I receive it. The fire of God. Amen. So I receive it. The fire of God. Say, so I got it, I got it. I'm going to sing for him. I'm going to sing for him. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. I so say, I receive the fire of God. Woo, there it is. I love it. I love it when I have little kids. I'm laying safe with Justin right here for the last.
I told you, we just go. Remember, we was in the hallway just a little while ago. I said, "This is for you." Didn't I tell you that? I said, "This message you come in, it's going, it's going to refresh you. It's going to refresh you. Come on, you get, you get your, you get you back in your spiritual rhythm. You back in your spiritual rhythm. No, no more in and out. You're not a burger shop. You belong in the house of God. Right? This is, this is. I receive it. The fire." You're going to speak in new tongue right now. New tongue, new tongue, new tongue. I no to show cool, cool, cool. There it is. It's in your, uh, there it is. There it is. coming, but it came right on through this, this this church right now. Your breakthrough, your breakthrough, your breakthrough. Jobs, 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 breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Healing, healing, healing. Deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. It is here. The fire of God is on this man of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Fire, fire, fire. Say, it's, it's, it's a fire and it's hot on me. It's a fire and it's hot on me. It's a fire and it's hot on me. Yes, yes, yes. Receive right here. special hugs. Fire. 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 That's a transfer of a fire. God, the Bible said in John 20 that not uh, when he had revealed himself to the disciples, he then breathed on them. I'm breathing the fire of God on you, man of God. You're going to walk it out. You're going to start reading words that you haven't read before. You're going to start speaking things that you haven't spoke before. The fire is going to move in you. In Jesus' name. Come on, fire God. Fire. Yes. Come on. I already know where you at. You in a place where they ain't going to teach you. They ain't going to let nothing go. You on fire. Say, I'm on fire. Look at say, I'm on fire. Say, enemy. I want, I'm putting you on notice. I'm putting you on notice. Ah, there it is. Say, say devil. I'm putting, on I'm putting you on notice. Get out of my family. Get out of me. Yeah. I'm on fire. 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 Fire. You're not faster than me. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. Come on, come on, give, come on, give God a hand clap praise because he's on fire. Fire the wall, fire the wall. You're a fire walker. You'll be 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 a fire walker. Yeshua HaMashiach. There is a pilot that has been lit again. We almost let it go out years ago. But now, not only is it lit, but it's heating the whole house. Not only is it lit, but it's able to furnace neighborhoods. Not only is this lit, but it's getting ready to furnace the city because this man of God is hot on fire. You're 
preach the gospel. Dear minister to the youth, break new grounds, design new programs for God. Find new ways to minister to people at, his, at the bank. Super Bowl Sunday. Because this is Super Sunday here at Glory Bible Fellowship International Church. says says my heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire burned and look what it says then I spake with my tongue I'm speaking to prophetess but I'm speaking through prophetess for all y'all that are that are prophesy going forward fire God is going to be so hot in you that it's going to make you utter words that will bring about healing words that will bring about deliverance words that will bring breakthrough churches, but breakthrough to cities, breakthrough to nations. Why? Because the Bible says, while I was hot reading the word, it began to be fire in me. So then I uttered, speaking my tongue. something in an unknown language and the person's going to understand it as they break through. In Jesus' name, that's the fire. 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 Say, I'm hot, I'm hot, I'm hot, I'm hot, I'm hot. My word's on fire. My word's on fire. My word's on fire. Oh, yeah, God. Oh, yeah. Christ just come to the altar. I, I don't. I can't. I, I don't. I'm, I'm, I, I ain't gonna do no uh, beautiful altar call. I'm just gonna say, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you need to have Jesus Christ in your life. Come to the altar right now. I'm pretty sure everybody here is saved or close to it. Or you know, if you don't let pride stop you from being saved. Well, I don't want all these people to look at me. Well, then you're gonna miss out on God. The Bible says, if you draw nigh to Him, uh, He'll draw nigh to you. 
But conversely, if you do the opposite, if, when you read that text, it says, draw nigh unto me, and I draw nigh unto you. But the opposite must be in effect. So if you do not draw close to God, God will not draw close to you. So don't miss out on this opportunity for salvation. Don't miss out on this opportunity for your breakthrough. We had a powerful church service today. Don't let it go for naught when you know you need a relationship with Jesus Christ. That don't mean you join in the church. That means you join in God's family. I'm not going to belabor it. Just repeat after me in Jesus' name. I repent of my sins. Everybody can repeat this. This is known and unknown. Thank you, God, for receiving my repentance. I now accept you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Live your life through me. And I'll give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. I thank you now, God, because I am now saved and I'm heaven bound in Jesus' name.